Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the production possibilities curve. This is the first graph you need to know in microeconomics and macroeconomics, but we're gonna make it as easy as possible here. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Well, first of all, we need to know what is that production possibilities curve. The production possibilities curve is a graph that shows all combinations of two goods or categories of goods that can be produced with fixed resources. Let's say when you get home from school today, you have two things you could do with your time. You're looking at the potential of playing some Fortnite matches and doing some math problems for homework. If you spend no time playing Fortnite and only doing your math homework, you could complete 80 math problems but play no matches of Fortnite. We're going to put a point right there indicating all of the math being done but zero Fortnite matches being played. Now on the other extreme, I could do no math and play 50 matches of Fortnite. Let's put that point down there on the bottom there where we have 50 matches of Fortnite and zero math problems. Now I could play some Fortnite and do some math problems and get these combinations of Fortnite and math. That gives us these other points right here. If we connect those points together, it gives us a production possibilities curve. It's all the combinations of Fortnite and math problems that you could produce when you get home after school today. Now on this production possibilities curve, we see some trade-offs. As you complete more math problems, that's going to move you up that curve, meaning you have to give up some of your Fortnite matches. Now, so the trade-off here is more math means less Fortnite. Of course, we could reverse this and go the other direction down the curve, and that would mean more Fortnite matches, but less math problems. Now we're going to have a future video all about opportunity cost, but we see opportunity cost in these numbers here. Opportunity cost is the cost of a choice. And on that table, we see the cost of math problems. If I do 20 math problems, then I move from zero math problems up to 20, and that's a benefit of 20 math problems. But those math problems aren't free for me. They are going to come at a cost of Fortnite matches. And since the number of Fortnite matches I can play changes from 50 down to 45, I have an opportunity cost of five Fortnite matches for the first 20 math problems that I complete. Now up at the top of that table there, I can go from completing 60 math problems up to 80 math problems. Those last 20 math problems come at a large opportunity cost of 20 Fortnite matches. We can go the opposite direction and look at the opportunity cost of Fortnite matches. That first 20 Fortnite matches comes at an opportunity cost of 20 math problems. And the last five Fortnite matches come at an opportunity cost of 20 math problems. So to find the opportunity cost of any amount of gain, you just look at the other side and find the difference. On the graph, we can also see opportunity costs moving from point A to point B. We're gaining 15 Fortnite matches. That's our benefit, but it's going to come at a cost of 20 math problems. Now, when you see a production possibilities curve that is concave, that means it's bowed out from the origin here. That means that the two goods being produced here have increasing opportunity costs. So the first 20 math problems are going to have a small opportunity cost. And that's because you are going to do the easiest math problems first, perhaps the ones that you don't have to show any work for, and they're really easy. Now the second 20 math problems are going to have a slightly higher opportunity cost. And that's because you're doing more difficult math problems. And as a result, you give up more matches of Fortnite. The next 20 math problems are more difficult. And as a result, you give up even more Fortnite matches. And then those last 20 math problems are the most difficult, probably the word problems where you have to show your work and figure out the formula. And as a result of the difficulty of those math problems, we're going to give up a large amount of Fortnite matches. And so we can see with that bowed out shape that as we continue to do more and more math, the opportunity cost of doing that math increases. Now this is economics and mostly we're going to be focusing on business choices in this class. And so although you can understand this with Fortnite and math problems, let's go ahead and turn this into a business example. And let's look at laptops versus cell phone production. An electronics manufacturer may be looking at the opportunity costs and the production possibilities curve for cell phones or laptops. We can also look at the entire economy at once by taking not just two goods, but categories of goods and looking at the entire economy. And you'll do that a lot in macroeconomics. Here we have capital goods and consumer goods. All goods and services within our economy can be placed into those two categories. You can also have a fictitious economy that produces just two things, corn and robots. Let's look at an economy that produces just corn and robots a little closer. 
Now we can take this example of an economy with corn and robots and make it simpler by removing all of the numbers. And that's what you're often going to do in economics because oftentimes we don't know the numbers or maybe they're made up. And so we can still illustrate the point by removing the numbers entirely. Even without numbers, that graph shows us that with more corn production, we are going to lose some production of robots. Now, if we see a linear production possibilities curve, that means that the production of one good is going to have constant opportunity costs in terms of the other good. In this example, we have cakes and cookies. And those constant opportunity costs come from resources that are being used to produce these two goods being perfectly adaptable. The resources that are needed to make cakes are equally adaptable to being used to produce cookies. But most of the time you're going to see a concave or bowed out curve like we have here with robots and corn. And so as we produce more and more corn, we are going to see greater and greater opportunity costs in terms of robots. These increasing opportunity costs come from the resources being used to produce one good not being perfectly adaptable to producing the other good. Resources that are great at producing corn are not likely to be very well adapted to producing robots. Let's go over some important points about that production possibilities curve. Any point of production on that curve means that our resources are being used efficiently. We call this type of efficiency productive efficiency. It means we're getting the most we can out of our resources. So in economics, we say that any point of production on the production possibilities curve is an efficient use of resources. Now in macroeconomics, we call this long run equilibrium. It means that our unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate or we have full employment. Now any point inside the curve is going to be an inefficient use of resources. It means that some of our resources are sitting idle and we are not using them to their full potential. In macroeconomics, we call this a recession. It means we have high levels of unemployment and many workers are not producing corn or robots in this economy. Now points of production outside the curve are impossible. We have scarce resources and we just can't produce everything we want. Those points of production outside the curve are beyond this economy's possible production. Now that production possibilities curve can change. It can shift in, it can shift out with any change in the quality or quantity of resources. If there's a decrease in the quality or quantity of resources, we're going to see that as a shift inward of the production possibilities curve. It is no longer possible to produce as much corn or robots in this economy. A natural disaster that destroys land, labor, and capital could cause a shift inward like this. If we have an increase in the quality or quantity of resources, we're going to see that as a shift outward of the production possibilities curve. That could come from an increase in the physical capital stock, an increase in the size of the labor force, or investments in human capital, which is skills and knowledge of workers. And more skilled workers are more productive workers. In macroeconomics, we call this economic growth. It means we can produce more goods and services than we could before. If we have a change in technology and that technology only impacts the production of one of the goods, the good in question, we're going to see a kick outward of that side of the curve. In this case, there's an increase in the technology for corn production. And that change in technology is going to change the opportunity cost. And we can see with the increase in the technology for the production of corn, the opportunity cost of the production of corn was there and now it's there. And so the opportunity cost of producing corn has just decreased as a result of the change in technology. Likewise, the opportunity cost for producing robots has just increased as a result of the change in technology. Now we have another production possibilities curve with consumer goods and capital goods. If the economy moves from producing a lot of capital goods and not a lot of consumer goods to point B here where we are producing fewer capital goods and more consumer goods, what's that going to do to economic growth? it's going to slow it because there will be a smaller amount of physical capital being produced within this economy because capital goods are physical capital that is used to produce both capital goods and consumer goods. If our economy moves into a recession, that would move us into the curve there as unemployment increases. As the economy reaches long run equilibrium again and workers get back to work, it will put us back on the curve there at point D. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about the production possibilities curve. If you're ready to practice this, head over to reviewecon.com and play the production possibilities curve game. If you still need more help after that, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. That's all for now. I'll see you all next time.